Uh, my name is John Wells, and the purpose of this tech stretch is to show educators, teachers, schools, and districts the benefits of Actively Learn. Actively Learn is an internet program uh, that is available for free, but the platform improves as you pay for the different packages. There's a prime and an unlimited. Um, essentially, what it allows teachers to do is to use Actively Learn's resources or to import their own, whether they be articles or stories, and include videos for help margin notes, vocabulary, uh, and then ask questions, uh, whether multiple choice or short answer or poll questions based on standards or DOK level, and it provides a way for teachers to give feedback. I think that this is a critically important program because it allows for choice of students. You can upload as many things as you like with the uh, Prime and Unlimited plans. Uh, you can pick and choose your articles. You can upload any article you want, and you can import create whatever questions or poll questions that you like. And then also it's a way to provide instant feedback or very, very, very quick feedback to students um, and allow them to revise their writing uh, on the fly, which I think is extremely valuable. So again, the idea of choice, the ability to pick articles um, for equity, and then that ability to give students instant feedback are the benefits of this amazing program. Uh, real quickly for educators, you can set up a free account. It's also very easy for students to sign up with the educator having an account. You give your students a code, they log in. It's very simple, very similar to Google Classroom. As you can see here, they have plans laid out by Actively Learn. With the free, you are very, very limited um, on what Actively Learn thinks is important about the services they provide from student reading, content, the different ways of differentiation, collaboration, data and reporting, the professional learning components that are included as well, and then those integrations and implementation, integrating into Google Classroom and other uh, Canvas, other forms like that. So as you can see, the Prime and Unlimited are very similar. Really, their only distinct difference would be these add-on prices, which would be additional costs on top of buying the Prime or Unlimited through Actively Learn. Um, I found that the, really the only big difference for us, because I had access to the Prime account this past year, would be that the paid text, which might be your novels that are on Actively Learn, you would still have to pay an additional fee for access to those, whereas with the Unlimited you would get them. Um, the Prime, though, is a has plenty of things that you can do with it and that are wonderful. So let's go ahead and sign in. Uh, the nice thing about Actually Learn is it does sync up really nicely with Google, Clever, or Office, or you can set up your own account. Um, I use Google because APS or Public Schools uses that for all of their documents and email. So I'll sign up or sign in with my Aurora K-12. So when you log in, you would be taken to a workspace just like this. All the stuff on this left-hand side would be blank because you wouldn't have classes yet. Uh, on this workspace, you see articles that are recommended by New ELA broken down by interest level. You have news, English language arts, science, social studies, school library. If you sync up with your school library, which is a nice feature with the unlimited membership. And then finally, imports, which is one of my favorite things. And we'll look at that in just a moment. So a student would come on here and you would either have an article assigned to them or perhaps you have them choose an article. Um, if you assign an article to students, the things that you can, sit, can consider when you're looking up an article or uploading your own would be the grade level of the text, the lexile level of the text, and then perhaps the standards that you're looking for. And you can look and see through the thousands of things that Actively Learn has through this search, and you can search by grade level, lexile, etc. Um, when you open up an article, so let's look at this one right here. This is a high interest article. The essential question is, what is modern slavery? Shows you the genres and themes right here. And then very faintly, it's three pages, grades 6 to 12 recommended in a uh, 1070 Lexile level. So when you quick click on this, you can see right here that this is already completely ready to go to put in front of students. Uh, after you learn has developed this, they've given you the directions. They've given you, given you some extra text summary here, which is a great way for differentiation some recommendations for teachers. Here's our first question, which is uh, a poll question. These are great for getting uh, whole class discussions going. And then you can see our 
whoever's developed the questions and the information for this article included some side notes. Students can see these things and just ways of differentiation and help differentiation and helping students better grasp the more difficult pieces of the article. And as a teacher, you can choose what you leave and what you take away. Um, so as you can see, there's plenty of articles included here um, by Actively Learn that are ready to go. Okay, So let's go back to our main workspace. So that, that's an overview of the article. Now, once students are actively working with this, uh, let me show you what that looks like. So let me click on one of my classes from last year. So this will be my first period. Okay, looks like they only had four assignments last year. But the information that I'm getting from them is extensive. So up here, these are the different pieces of information I can get about students, where that's my grade book, which shows how they did on each individual assignment. Individual student data, so some metrics about uh, their grades, where they are following as far as basic, proficient, beyond proficient their reading pace, how quickly they're reading between questions, uh, words per response, how much are they giving me uh, in their response word-wise when they're working on those short answers. Um, so a lot of metrics here that you can use for reteaching or formulating new units. And then also up here we have class data, which is broken down then by standard and DOK level. So just a wealth of information here uh, and data that you can use to inform your instruction what it actually looks like when a student is working on an assignment. Uh, let's go back to that class. Okay, so on our assignments, let's say this um, Scarlet Letter pre-reading, which was an article students read about the Puritans. We'll click on that. Um, so these are questions that have already students have been answering, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when a student is given feedback in real time. So Let's go to question number three. So question number three says it has everything to do with finding information in this text and speaking to it. So if I click on it, you can see over here how I've already worked with a student on a question that they answered. So this kind of ghosted out text right here would be this student's first answer. And I gave them some feedback that you can barely see, but I said, I don't totally follow you. Can you elaborate on this to make it clear? And I was able to send that to the student in real time. And then they came back with a little bit more thorough answer, and they got rid of the use of I in it, which I thought was good. But again, I gave them some more feedback, you know, and a little bit more specific. Okay, how can we tweak this to make it better? And I did give this student a partially proficient for that answer. Um, the student would have received that grade, and then they could have asked back uh, for another revision if they wanted to but it seems like they were fine with partially proficient you can see through here this is a little bit more extensive answer uh, and i gave them feedback it was a nice answer and gave them a proficient so one of the perks of this program is this ability to interact with students in real time give them feedback and give them the option and the ability to revise now going back let's go back to our workspace um, because before we can get to giving that feedback we got to look at how you would develop and create one of these on your own. So if you go to content, let's say you wanted to give your student a bunch of choices of articles and you wanted to provide some equitable, some different voices, you might import something. So if we click on my imports, these are all of the imports that I've had over the past few years. And you can add content, any content that you want that you found on the internet. So if we click on this add content button, You'll see that we can add an internet article with the URL. We can import a Google Doc, which I think is the easiest and best way, and you can manipulate it the most. You can upload a PDF, which is nice, but again, you can't manipulate a PDF uh, the way you can a Google Doc, so you can only put information at the beginning and end of a PDF. You can create a quiz, and lastly, you can import a video and ask questions about the video, similar to how you would with an article or short story. So let's say we want to upload or import a Google Doc. What you would have already done is found the information, copy it into a Google Doc, um, have it ready to go. So we'll click on Import Google Doc, and it'll look on your computer for the file. I chose, just for this exercise, Two Kinds by Amy Tan. Um, she's an Asian-American author, um, so looking for that equitable voice. I don't think a lot of students are um, exposed to Asian-American female authors. So here's that 
text in a Google Doc. I will select it. Okay, and it'll give me the option to title it correctly. So two kinds, our author is Amy Tan, so others can find it. And then we'll select a content type as well. We'll say it's literature. You don't get a lot of content options here, um, but that way someone can, it helps when, if someone's looking for a similar thing. And we'll add the text. And there it is. It's now one of your imports. Okay. And now you're able to manipulate the text however you like. So you click on it, and now it's been put into this format by Actively Learn, and they prompt you for some very general things. You can add your directions and keep it simple. Please read and answer questions. Okay, you can keep it that simple, or you can add media. You could do an actual video. Um, you could add a summary of the text to help differentiate for those students that need it. Perhaps you can add a pre-reading essential question. There's many, many things you can do. I just want to show you at the surface level um, how easy this is to work with. So let's say we're focusing on students identifying main and central ideas throughout the text and how they develop. So let's go about six paragraphs in here and let's throw a question about that in here. It's very simple. You just highlight where you want to put the question. You can insert a question, a note, you can put a link to something, you can completely white it out, or you can add a definition. So we'll insert a question. We have the option of doing a short answer, multiple choice or poll question. I like short answers because they force students to write. You select your standard, which is wonderful. You can change your standard set, anything you like. We'll go with a reading main idea since we had talked about that and talking about central ideas through a text. And we'll pose our question. Maybe our question is something like, uh, what do you think the main idea is so far in the text? Not the greatest question in the world, but it gets to the point. And I'm just showing you here how you can connect your question to your standard, develop as a short answer, multiple choice, or poll question. You click Save. And there your question is, your students would see that question as they're reading the text and would not be able to move on to this part of the text here uh, without answering this question first. Then you would assign it to your classes, however many you have, click assign, and they would be able to see that. So again, going back to our workspace here, really the benefits of Actively Learn are those ways in which you can access all of their information uh, that they already have with wonderful questions. You can import and develop your own questions and media, and then you have all that access to information um, that students give you based on how well they do on each assignment. And then there's that wonderfully amazing feedback piece in which you can give students feedback right over here in real time as they're answering questions and going through the work that you've uploaded for them. So I propose to teachers, uh, schools, districts, that this is a wonderful and valuable resource um, that really, as long as it's used wisely and used purposefully, it can be very, very effective in student growth and in differentiation and providing equitable voices to students that maybe don't get a lot of access to a wide variety of authors, backgrounds, and things like that. Thank you.